Hello, this lecture is on finding relative extrema, maxes and mins, and points of inflection with functions that are exponential and logarithmic, or E and LN. So again, again, if you see the pattern for this unit or see the pattern for these videos, we're doing things you've already done before, processes you're very comfortable with that you've passed before, but now I'm just adding E and LN. For these problems, you can see here, there's four things you need to be able to do. That is, where is it increasing and decreasing? Um, oops. Find out where it's increasing and decreasing. Where are the local extrema, and is it local minimum or maximum? Find out where is their concave up and concave down, and then state the x-coordinates of the inflection points. All stuff, again, you should be comfortable with. Most of you have passed these standards before, so you should have already know how to do this. So here's my first function. And in my first function, what I'm going to do is x e to the negative x. Um, to find increasing and decreasing and local minimum and maximum, a and b basically for this problem, I need to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. This problem, though, I have a product rule. So I have to take the derivative of the first one. So f prime of x. Derivative of the first one is 1. Leave the second one alone, like so. Plus, leave the first one alone. And then derivative of the, uh, the second one, e to the negative x. Again, the derivative of e to the x is uh, just e to the x, but I have a negative, I have to multiply. So this becomes negative e to the negative x. And again, I have to multiply by that negative because I have to take the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of the inside becomes negative 1. So this becomes e to the negative x minus x e to the negative x. And I set that equal to 0 because I'm trying to find increasing, decreasing, and con um, max and mins. If you forgot how to solve these types of problems, what you want to do is you want to factor it. In this particular case, you see both terms have an e to the negative x, so I'm going to factor that out. So I'm going to take away an e to the negative x. This first piece is a 1, and this last piece becomes an x, like so. One of these has to equal 0, so this has to equal 0, or this has to equal 0. The right one is the easy one. You know that if this is 1, that will make that equal to 0. But this one on the left, you may be confused, like what would make this 0? And for e, um, there is no value that would make this 0. So you could put like d and e, or it does not exist. Um, I could put like a blank circle, because there is no number I could put in there that would give me a 0. Okay. So the only value I have is 1. After I get that number, you may have forgotten, I put that on a number line, like so. I'm going to test two numbers, one to the left and one to the right. So I'll do 0 on the left, and I'll test the number 2 on the right. I take these numbers, since I want to find increasing and decreasing, I take these numbers and put it into my derivative to see what sign do I get. I don't care what the answer is, I just want the sign. If I put a 0 into the first part, e to the negative x, so if I put a 0 here, I'm going to get a positive number. Anything to the 0, anything to the zero exponent is just 1, so I'm going to get a positive number. If I plug 0 into here, I'll also get a positive number. Positive times a positive, this whole zone is positive. If I put a 2 here, okay, if I put a 2 into this equation, I get e to the negative 2, which is 1 over e squared, which is still a positive number. If I plug 2 into the parentheses, 1 minus x, I get a negative number. This whole zone is negative. So to answer the first question, A, where is this increasing and decreasing? Um, here, I'll put it here on the side. It's increasing from negative infinity to 1. So I say from 1 all the way to the left, it's increasing because I get a plus sign. And it's decreasing all the way to the right of 1. And that's how I do increasing and decreasing. And B says, where are my local extrema? I only have one local extrema. It's 1. So my local extrema is x equals 1. And the question is, is this a max or a min? Well, let's see. Well, first it's increasing, and then it's decreasing. That is a max. So hopefully you understand how to do that. It's not, not so difficult. Again, something you've seen before. Now, part two is, is it concave up or concave down? Where is it concave up and concave down? And where are my points of inflection? So if you remember, it's the exact same process, just with the second derivative. So I'm going to take, remember this was my first derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of that, okay? So I will take, um, oh, 
let me use let me use my factored form and take the derivative of that. Okay, so I'm looking for f double prime of x now. And you could use either one. Like you could use either equation. They're both the, these two equations, this one and this one, are exactly the same. I just factored one. But you can take the derivative of either one, and you'll get the same answer. I'm gonna fact. I'm gonna take the derivative of this one. It looks easier to me. So the derivative of the first one. I'm gonna have to do product rule here. The derivative of the first one is actually. Let me make some more space here. The derivative of the first one is negative e to the negative x. Leave the um, leave the second one alone. Okay. Plus leave the first um, leave the first one alone, and the derivative of the second one, the derivative of one minus x is negative one, like so. Okay. If I had to simplify this, f double prime is equal to negative e to the negative x one minus x plus Oh, sorry, minus e to the negative x. Again, I need to set this equal to zero. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor so I could figure out what the numbers have to be to make this equal to zero. I'm going to factor out a negative e to the negative x. So zoom in here. I'm going to factor out a negative e to the negative x. If I factor that out, that leaves me with a 1 minus x on this side. And it leaves me with a minus 1 if I factor it out from the second term. Again, this is set equal to 0. On the inside of my parentheses, you'll notice that my 1's will cancel. So this whole thing just becomes negative e to negative x, parentheses, negative x, because my 1 and minus 1 cancel. And then I could just combine this into one term. This will become x e to negative x and set that equal to 0. That was very simple. Okay. And then I think you have this answers already in your notes. So I'm going to erase A and B here so I have more space. And I'll draw a line so that you're not confused. I'm trying to solve this right side. Okay. So now this is my answer. Okay, I've simplified it. Now I have two things to multiply to give me zero. So that either this has to equal zero or this has to equal zero. I told you last time that this one on the right will never equal zero. E to the x never hits zero. You could graph it, it never hits zero. And x becomes zero when x equals zero. So again, I only have one critical number, or in this case, I only have one point of inflection, which means I will take it, put it on the number line, and test numbers to the left and to the right of it. Okay. And because I want to know if it's concave up or concave down, I will plug these numbers into my second derivative. If I plug in negative 1 into x, I get a negative number. If I plug in negative 1 into e to the negative x, it becomes e to the 1, and e to the 1 is a positive number. So this whole zone, negative times positive, is negative. If I plug in 1, it becomes positive. If I plug in 1 into the other one, it also becomes positive. This becomes positive. So to answer my last question, c, it is concave down from negative infinity to zero, and it's concave up from zero to infinity. Because if you look at my number line, it's negative all the way to the left, and it's positive all the way to the right. And D says, all it asks for is what is my point of inflection? My point of inflection is x equals zero. So that's how you do these problems. Hopefully you understand this. Again, it's a process you've done before. You take the first derivative, set it equal to zero, make your number line, and do all that stuff. And then for concavity and for points inflection, you take the second derivative and set it equal to zero, do the exact same process. Hopefully you understand it. Again, if you're confused, um, please feel free to ask, ask any questions that you have, and we'll go over this in class. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all later.